right before dying, my husband turned to me and whispered, I'm sorry. Confused, I asked him, For what? He simply replied, You'll see. For agonizing weeks later, my life was appended in ways I couldn't have imagined. Her kids called 911 after finding out who he is. For weeks after my husband's cryptic last words, I'm still grappling with my loss. Every day feels like a struggle to keep going, and I find myself constantly questioning what he meant. His words echo in my mind, compounding my grief with confusion. The house feels empty without his presence, and the weight of his absence presses heavily upon me. Our once lively home now feels eerily silent. The kids are struggling too, each in their own way. Timmy barely talks anymore, retreating into his room and hiding behind video games. Lucy, on the other hand, has become extra clingy, refusing to leave my side. Their schoolwork is suffering. Teachers have called home several times. They ask questions I can't answer. Why did daddy say that? What did he mean? It's heartbreaking seeing them this way. One night, a stranger knocked on the door, asking for my husband by name. Startled, I asked, Who are you? He looked nervous, glancing around as if checking for something or someone. The kids peeked from behind the living room door, their eyes wide with curiosity and fear. I need to speak with Mark, the man insisted. It's urgent, he added, glancing over his shoulder nervously. He claimed to have something urgent to discuss. It's very important, he said, fidgeting with a small package in his hands. I felt a mix of dread and curiosity bubbling inside me. Mark can't come to the door, I said quietly, unsure how much to reveal. The man's eyes showed a flicker of understanding. I'm sorry for your loss, he mumbled, before holding out the package. Instead of explaining, he handed over a sealed envelope addressed to me and hurried off. I stood there, watching him rush away into the night, unable to process what just transpired. The kids walked up to me, Timmy asking, Who is that, Mom? And Lucy clutching my arm. I don't know. I replied, my eyes fixed on the envelope. I took a deep breath and opened it. The envelope contained a letter from my husband, written just days before his death. My heart pounded as I unfolded the crisp paper and recognized his handwriting. The familiar scrawl brought tears to my eyes. Dear Sarah, it began, I'm so sorry for everything. His words felt both like a comfort and a blow. There are things you need to know, things I've kept hidden. The letter continued. The letter apologized again and mentioned something he had done years ago. I scanned the lines, searching for clarity. There are actions I took that affect our present, he wrote. I hoped you'd never have to find out, but it seems inevitable now. My mind swirled with questions. What had he done? Why hadn't he told me sooner? The vagueness of his message only deepened my unease. It was vague, making me more curious and anxious. What could he have done? I muttered, pacing the living room. The kids watched me, sensing my anxiety. Mom! Are you okay? Lucy asked softly, bringing me back to reality. Yes, sweetie. Just thinking about something, I replied, forcing a smile. But inside, my heart was racing. I needed answers, and I needed them now. The next day, I started looking through his old belongings for answers. Memories flooded back as I rummaged through boxes of photographs, documents, and forgotten treasures. Timmy and Lucy sat nearby, their eyes wide with curiosity. Why are you going through dad stuff? Timmy asked. I'm trying to understand something he mentioned. I said, hoping for a clue. Among the old documents, I found something that made my heart skip a beat. Among the old documents, I found several receipts for large, unexplained withdrawals. The amounts were substantial, way more than we ever discussed. My hands shook as I examined each one, trying to recall what he could have needed all that money for. It didn't make sense. Why hide such transactions? The questions grew louder in my mind, amplified by my growing fear that I had only begun to uncover half-truths and secrets. My mind raced with possibilities. 
none of which seemed positive. Could he have been involved in something illegal? Was he gambling? My thoughts bounce around like pinballs, hitting worst-case scenarios one after another. Each theory made my stomach churn more. I couldn't settle on any one thing, but the ominous feeling wouldn't leave me. I was desperate for answers, a way to make sense of this disturbing new layer of our life. While searching through his things, I discovered an unfamiliar key taped under his desk drawer. It was small but seemed important. Curious, I pried it off carefully, holding it up to the light as if expecting it to reveal its secrets. I had no idea what it was for, but the fact that it was hidden made my heart race. I needed to find out what this key opened. It seemed important, but I had no idea what it was for. I sat there, the key cool and heavy in my palm, pondering its purpose. Should I ask someone for help? The thought of sharing this with anyone made me uneasy. I didn't want to involve the kids or raise their worries. Instead, I decided to keep it close and figure this out on my own. The key felt like a puzzle piece. Taking the kids to school kept me occupied, but the key weighed heavily in my pocket. I tried to focus on their day-to-day -day needs, masking my anxiety with routine. Lucy's nervous questions about her homework and Timmy's usual grumpiness filled the morning. Still, each time my hand brushed against the key, curiosity tugged at me. What did Mark leave behind? My gut told me this key was part of a larger mystery. I visited the bank, hoping they would recognize my husband's secret. Walking inside, I fought off the nerves bubbling in my chest. An employee at the desk smiled politely. How can I help you today? He asked. I found this key among my husband's things. I explained. I believe it might belong to a safety deposit box. He nodded and took the key, promising to check for any matches. My heart pounded in anticipation. They redirected me to a safety deposit box, and my hands trembled as I turned the key. The clerk gave me a sidelong glance, but said nothing. The metal click of the lock echoed in the silent room. I took a deep breath and pulled the slender handle. The box slid out smoothly. Inside, my eyes fell upon a bundle of letters, neatly tied together with twine. I hesitated, fearing what I might discover. Inside was a bundle of letters. The stack looked aged, envelopes yellowed and brittle at the edges. My fingers hovered over them, hesitating before picking them up. Each was sealed with care, bearing no immediate clues. I untied the twine cautiously and pulled out the top letter. As I unfolded it, a soft, musky scent wafted out. The handwriting was unmistakably marked but strikingly different, more intimate and poetic than I had ever seen. The letters were old, and many were postmarked from a location I would never heard him mention. My brow furrowed as I tried to recall any trips or stories he'd told that could account for these. Nothing came to mind. The addresses were from a small town out of state, a place that seemed to hold some significance. The more I delved into these letters, the deeper my husband's secret life seemed to unravel. Each letter contained short, loving notes signed by someone named Rose. My breath hitched as I read words of affection. My dearest Mark, one began, I think of you every day. Who was Rose? Why had Mark kept these letters? Questions buzzed around my head like angry bees. I couldn't deny the obvious affection between them. The next step was clear. I needed to find out who Rose was and what she meant to him. It became clear that there had been a deep, personal connection between them. Each letter was filled with words that betrayed an intimacy I hadn't known Mark was capable of sharing with anyone else. Rose wasn't just a fleeting figure in his past. She was someone who mattered profoundly to him. I couldn't reconcile this new revelation with the Mark I knew and loved. My mind raced with questions about their relationship. Confusion overwhelmed me as I wondered who Rose was and what she meant to my husband. How had he managed to keep this part of his life hidden from me for so long? Each letter was more perplexing than the last, revealing fragments of his secret life. Did he love her more than me? Did we ever truly know each other? These thoughts left me anxious and desperate for clarity. I decided to contact the return address listed on the letters. It was the only way to get the answers I needed. I hesitated before dialing the number, 
my hand shaking slightly. After a few rings, there was no answer. Determined, I scribbled the address into my notebook. I was ready to take the next step, even if it meant confronting a piece of his past that I never knew. With the address leading me across the state, I arranged for the kids to stay with my sister. I couldn't bring them into this uncertain situation. Explaining why I needed to leave for a few days was tricky. Mom has some important matters to handle. I told Timmy and Lucy. They seemed to understand, albeit reluctantly. Leaving them was hard, but uncovering the truth took precedence over my fear. In the old neighborhood, I found a woman matching the description from the letters. The house stood modest, but inviting in a quaint part of town. My heart pounded as I walked up the path, each step tinged with anxious anticipation. After knocking, the door creaked open. A woman looked at me with wide eyes, her face revealing a mix of curiosity and recognition. Are you Rose? I asked. She was shocked to see me, but invited me in after realizing who I was. You must be Sarah, she murmured, stepping back to allow me inside. Her eyes clouded with emotions I couldn't place. The living room felt cozy, adorned with photos and knickknacks. I could feel the weight of her curiosity as she offered me a seat. We sat in awkward silence for a moment before she spoke. Rose explained that she and my husband had known each other for years. Mark and I go way back, she said, her voice tinged with nostalgia. My heart ached listening to her recount their shared history, filled with laughter and memories that were new to me. She spoke about how they first met and the journey their friendship had taken. It was clear that their bond was significant and enduring. She stopped short of revealing the full extent of their relationship. It was as if she held back deliberately, leaving more unsaid than expressed. He was special to me, she admitted, eyes glistening. I could sense she knew more than she let on, but probing further felt invasive. The pieces weren't adding up and my frustration grew. I needed to know what exactly Mark meant by his cryptic apologies. She suggested that whatever Mark had to apologize for was not what I thought. There's more to this story than you imagine, she hinted. It was infuriatingly vague, but her tone suggested deep understanding. Mark was trying to protect you, she added softly. I left with more questions than answers, feeling as though a new layer of mystery had been added. What had he really been involved in? All the while, my life back home was unraveling. Bills piled up on the kitchen counter, unopened and demanding attention. The kids' behavior grew increasingly erratic. Timmy had nightmares and Lucy clung to me constantly. Strange calls at odd hours became a worrying routine. Each ring of the phone made my heart pound. I felt my grip on normality slipping away, replaced by a chaos I couldn't control or comprehend. Bills piled up and creepy incidents occurred like strange calls at odd hours. The phone would ring and when I answered, there was only silence on the other end. My nerves frayed a little more with each unsettling call. The unpaid bills seemed to mock me from the counter. I scrambled to manage the household, but the mounting stress made it increasingly difficult to focus on anything else. The kids were scared and I felt my grip on normality slipping. Timmy wouldn't sleep alone anymore and Lucy followed me around like a shadow. Their fear was palpable, making my heart ache with guilt. Mom, is someone trying to hurt us? Timmy asked one night. No, sweetheart, I reassured, though I wasn't sure of anything. Their wide, frightened eyes haunted my thoughts, urging me to find some stability for us. One evening, the police visited after receiving anonymous reports of suspicious activity at our home. Their knock startled me, echoing ominously through the quiet house. Ma'am, we received reports about some strange happenings here. Can we come in? One officer asked. Their badges glinted under the porch light, and I felt a cold dread rising. Inviting them in, I explained about the eerie calls and the general unease we'd been living with. Their questions left me feeling even more targeted and confused. Have you noticed anyone unusual around your home? The officer asked. I shook my head, feeling lost. They took notes, exchanged concerned glances, and left me with a hollow sense of vulnerability. If anything else happens, 
please let us know immediately, they urge before departing. Standing in the dimly lit hallway, I realize how exposed we were, living under an unseen threat. My husband's old friend, Paul, showed up unannounced, saying he knew about Mark's secrets. I opened the door, surprised to see his familiar face looking grim. Sarah, we need to talk, he said, stepping inside without waiting for an invitation. His presence was unnerving yet oddly comforting. What do you know, Paul? I asked, desperate for answers. He avoided my gaze, seemingly burdened by whatever he had come to share. He reiterated that Mark tried to protect us from something dangerous but wouldn't specify. Mark was involved in some serious stuff, Sarah. He always wanted to keep you and the kids safe. Paul said cautiously. His words were heavy, filled with unspoken truths. What kind of danger? I pressed. He shook his head. I can't go into details, but you need to trust me, he replied, leaving my mind teeming with worried thoughts. His vague warnings made me cautious but determined to uncover the truth. You're not telling me everything, Paul, I said, frustration creeping into my voice. He sighed deeply, rubbing the back of his neck. I've said too much already. Just be careful and trust your instincts, he warned. Even in his cryptic demeanor, Paul's concern was evident. My resolve to dig deeper strengthened, fueled by his unsettling caution. Answers felt closer, yet so far. Paul advised me to hire a private investigator and left his contact as a go-to. You should speak with Carla. She's good at what she does, he insisted, handing me a business card. The card felt like a beacon of hope in my desperate search for answers. Thanks, Paul, I murmured, clutching it tightly. He nodded, giving me a brief, reassuring smile before leaving. His advice resonated giving me a new direction to pursue. His departure left me both resolved and terrified. As the door closed behind him, a whirlwind of emotions surged through me. The kid sensed the shift in my mood. Mom, are we safe? Lucy asked softly. Yes, sweetheart, I replied, reassuring myself as much as her. I looked at Carla's business card, feeling a mix of hope and fear. The next steps were crucial. I needed to find out the truth, no matter the cost. The private investigator, Carla, quickly made headway. Within days, she had gathered substantial information, tracing financial transactions and old connections. Your husband was involved in complex dealings, some offshore accounts, she briefed me, flipping through folders of documents. Each revelation added layers to the enigma that was Mark. We're close to understanding what he was tangled up in. Carla assured me. Her efficiency brought some relief, but the full picture remained just out of reach. Carla identified financial traces, leading to offshore accounts and hidden investments. Each document she presented painted a picture of a man entrenched in secrecy. These accounts are in places known for their privacy laws, she explained. Mark must have gone to great lengths to conceal this. The offshore accounts were sizable, making me wonder what Mark had been involved in. I couldn't believe the extent of what he had hidden from me. She unearthed obscure business dealings involving shady partners my husband had never mentioned. The names and companies were unfamiliar, almost like they were pulled from a crime novel. These people aren't the type you want to cross, Carla warned, flipping through pages of contracts and agreements. Each piece of evidence made my chest tighten with anxiety. The deeper we dug, the more Mark's secret life seemed fraught with peril. Each revelation muddied the waters. It seemed he was involved with people who could harm us. The documents revealed a tangled web of intrigue and deception. Carla's grave expression didn't help my fraying nerves. We need to be cautious, she advised, her eyes locked on mine. The uncertainty of what lay ahead was terrifying. Mark's hidden dealings not only endangered him, but also put our entire family at risk as fear gripped me. Carla assured she was close to finding out why Mark apologized and what immediate threats existed. We're piecing it together, she said softly, scribbling notes in her pad. This is a complex situation, but we're getting there. Her calm demeanor gave me a small measure of comfort. Despite the growing danger, I felt a bit more hopeful knowing Carla was determined to uncover the truth. 
Carla discovered his involvement with a company conducting illegal activities, ones he had tried to pull away from. It looks like Mark regretted his involvement, she said, pointing to a series of transactions. These are attempts to distance himself from these activities. The revelation was shocking, yet it also matched Mark's cryptic apologies. His final words started to make more sense. Guilt must have weighed heavily on him. Throughout the investigation, cards with veiled threats were sent to our home. Each note had cryptic warnings like, stay quiet, and you don't know who you're dealing with. This is getting dangerous, Carla remarked, examining the latest card. We need to be extremely careful. The sinister implications made my skin crawl. The frequent threats suggested whoever Mark was involved with didn't take kindly to loose ends. The climax was a near break-in, thwarted only by our home alarm. The night shattered by piercing sirens and frantic calls to 911. The police arrived swiftly, their flashlights cutting through the dark. It looks like someone tried to force entry, the officer noted, inspecting the door. My heart pounded wildly, the realization of how close we'd come to actual danger sinking in. My family's safety felt even more precarious. Feeling cornered, I feared the unknown entities behind Mark's involvement. Shadows outside the windows seemed to lurk menacingly. The kids were jittery. Mom, will they come back? Timmy asked anxiously. I won't let anyone hurt us. I promised, though the words felt hollow. Mark's hidden life had dragged us into this terrifying situation, and each passing day made me realize how dire our circumstances were becoming. These incidents prompted the police to increase surveillance, showing the seriousness of the situation. Patrol cars frequently passed by, giving me some assurance. Your area is under close watch, the officer said. Despite this, paranoia clung to me. Every creak of the house, every distant sound at night made me jump. The police presence was a stark reminder that our lives were far from normal. One day... A package arrived containing a small, locked journal belonging to my husband. The box was nondescript, but its contents immediately struck me as vital. My hands shook as I tried to open it, finally finding a tiny key tucked inside the packaging. The journal's cover was worn, hinting at hours spent writing within. Mark's confessions were preserved in those pages, a final attempt to explain his hidden life. His confessions filled the pages, detailing his regrets and fears. Mark's handwriting appeared strained, as if he had struggled to pour out his soul. Sarah, I'm sorry for all the pain I've caused, he wrote. His words painted a picture of a man haunted by his own choices, trying to make amends in his final moments. The intensity of his feelings was palpable, and I felt both angry and heartbroken. It also contained names, dates, and secret meetings shedding light on his involvement in criminal activities. He listed people I'd never heard of, dates that coincided with his unexplained absences. Each entry revealed a hidden side of his life, one I was utterly oblivious to. He seemed to be documenting every step with meticulous detail, almost like he wanted to leave a trail for someone to follow. My head spun with all this new information. Mark's final entry expressed his hope that one day I'd forgive him for the pain his actions had caused. I never wanted to burden you with this, he wrote, but truth has a way of coming out. His words echoed through my mind, making my chest tighten. I could feel his torment and his desperate need for redemption. Yet, forgiveness felt distant, buried under layers of anger and confusion. Just as I pieced things together, the doorbell rang. The sudden jolt pulled me back to the present who could possibly be here now wiping away a tear I walked to the door each step heavier than the last opening it I was met by a man I didn't recognize can I help you I asked cautiously without hesitation he revealed something that left me speechless the man at the door claimed to be the biological father of one of my children my name's Jake we need to talk he said with a grave expression. My heart skipped a beat. What do you mean? I stammered, clutching the doorframe for support. He reiterated calmly, one of your children is actually mine. His words were like a punch to the gut, leaving me reeling with disbelief and confusion. 
He revealed that my husband had taken him in to protect us all from a dangerous past. Mark was a good man. He wanted to keep you safe from the mistakes he made, Jake explained. I was too stunned to process his words fully. Jake's eyes held a sincerity that made it difficult to doubt him. Still, the idea of my husband shielding us from such danger was almost too much to bear. This mysterious man explained that Mark had once been involved with a criminal syndicate. He did things he regretted deeply, Jake stated, eyes darkening. I could see the weight of his memories. Mark tried to break free, but it wasn't easy. The pieces of the puzzle started to fall into place, and Mark's cryptic apologies began to make a grim sort of sense. He had been battling a dangerous past all along. He switched sides when he realized his mistakes, trying to bring them down from within. Mark would make things right, Jake continued. He used his knowledge to help law enforcement, but it put him and you in danger. The tension in his voice was palpable. This turn of events painted my husband in a new light, one where he was both a flawed man and a hero. My mind struggled to keep up. The man on our doorstep claimed he was my children's real father. I'm here now to protect you and the kids, he said firmly. My legs felt weak. The rug had been pulled out from under me. Why now? I demanded, feeling both angry and desperate. Jake sighed heavily, because Mark knew they'd come after you next. He fought so hard to shield you from all this. His words were a lifeline amid chaos. He emphasized his intent to protect us from the very enemies my husband had defied. You're not safe here alone. We need to move quickly, Jake insisted. His urgency was clear, and while my instinct screamed to protect my children, my trust in him wavered. How do I know you're telling the truth? I asked. Because I love Mark too. He saved my life, and now I need to save yours. Jake replied with resolve. In shock, I called the police and they immediately detained the man for questioning. Jake cooperated, Hands raised and eyes steady. The officers took him aside and began asking a flurry of questions. I stood there, clutching the doorframe for support, barely able to comprehend the whirlwind of revelations. The kids peeked around the corner, confusion and fear evident in their eyes. Mom, what's happening? Timmy whispered, his voice trembling. The kids, initially unaware, were devastated by the revelation of his identity. What do you mean he's my real dad? Timmy's face crumpled in distress. Lucy clung to me, tears streaming down her face. But daddy's gone, she sobbed. My heart broke for them, the weight of their confusion pressing down on my chest. We'll get through this, I promised, though my own certainty wavered. It was a promise I sincerely hoped I could keep. They called 911 ensuring that their biological father was taken into custody. The police officers moved swiftly, detaining Jake in the squad car. We'll need you to come down to the station to answer some questions. One officer explained to me, his tone gentle but firm. I nodded, feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. The kids watched from the doorway, their expressions a mix of fear and bewilderment. I tried to remain strong for them, The investigation revealed more about Mark's secret life and his efforts to shield us. The detectives uncovered documents and made connections between Mark and the criminal syndicate. Each new piece of information painted a picture of a man caught between love for his family and his dark past. I sat in the police station, absorbing every detail, feeling a mix of pride and sorrow. Mark's sacrifices became clearer, but the danger we were still in loomed large. With the threat still looming, the police set up constant surveillance on our home. Squads patrolled the neighborhood, and an officer was posted nearby. We'll do everything we can to keep you safe, the lead detective assured me. The increased security gave me a sliver of hope, though the fear never fully dissipated. The kids seemed to take some comfort in the visible presence of protection, although the tension in our home was palpable. As the truth unfolded, I realized the extent of the danger Mark had tried to protect us from. The Syndicate's threats were not idle. They had resources and connections that made them formidable adversaries. Mark's actions had been a desperate attempt to shield us from their reach.
The kids and I lived under a cloud of fear, constantly aware that any moment could bring new threats. My resolve to uncover the full truth and end this danger solidified. Gradually, more individuals linked to the criminal syndicate were apprehended. Each arrest brought a modicum of relief, as the web of danger around us slowly began to unravel. Carla kept me updated, her reports filled with new developments and breakthroughs. Knowing these dangerous people were being taken off the streets helped me sleep a bit better at night. Yet, the fear still lingered, reminding me that the danger was not entirely behind us. Each arrest brought a sense of relief, but it also revealed deeper layers of deceit. The syndicate was more vast and intricate than I had imagined, with connections reaching far and wide. Mark's involvement had been significant, his efforts to undermine them even more courageous. Carla's investigation continued to peel back layers, exposing the syndicate's crimes. Though unsettling, this information was crucial in dismantling the network threatening our lives. With the syndicate dismantled, normalcy began to return to our lives. The constant police surveillance eased and the kids started to feel safe again. Our home, once filled with tension and fear, slowly returned to a more carefree atmosphere. The relief was palpable and I found myself smiling more, the heavy weight on my heart lifting. We celebrated small victories, each day bringing us closer to reclaiming the peace we had lost. Though scarred by the past, we started a new chapter, forever grateful for Mark's sacrifice. His actions, once shrouded in mystery, were now seen as a testament to his love and bravery. The kids began to heal, finding joy in their routines again. I took solace in knowing that Mark's efforts had not been in vain. Our future, while uncertain, was filled with hope. Mark had given us the gift of safety, something I would always cherish.